Both the auto the automatic cabin pressure controllers, CPCs, can operate in an automatic mode or a semi-automatic mode. They optimize the cabin altitude to not exceed a limit of 8,000 feet. Both the automatic and semi-automatic modes are available when the mode selector push button is not selected to manual. The automatic mode is engaged with auto selected. In auto, the system automatically sets the cabin altitude for takeoff, cruise, and landing according to data from the FMGS, EIU, LGCIU, and ADIRS. The semi-automatic mode also sets the cabin altitude throughout the flight, but will set the cabin altitude to the selected landing field elevation upon landing. Specific landing field elevations may be selected with a landing elevation selector. In the event that both automatic systems have failed, a third drive motor is available for manual control of the outflow valve position. It is engaged by pressing the mode selector push button to engage the manual mode. We'll discuss it later. Now, we'll describe each mode in detail. The cabin pressure panel is normally used before flight to set up the pressurization system in the automatic mode. No other inputs to this panel are normally required. Accordingly, the mode selector push button is normally in the lights out position, which is the automatic mode. the automatic mode operating and the landing elevation selector in the auto position, full automatic operation operates throughout the flight. The FMGS provides landing field elevation data to the CPCs according to the destination airport entered to the FMGS, while the ADIRS provides the air data information. If the pilot suspects faulty operation of the active CPC and the system does not switch to the other CPC automatically, the pilot may select the other CPC by switching the mode selector push button to manual, waiting at least 10 seconds, and then reselecting auto. There are six flight modes for the automatic pressurization system. They are ground, takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, and abort. This chart from your FCOM shows the conditions that cause the pressurization modes to switch from one mode to another mode. Now we will talk about the normal flight modes followed by the abort and reversion modes. Each mode first states a general concept statement defining the mode followed by the details. The details are included only for information. It is necessary only to have a conceptual understanding of the modes. There are subtle differences for strut compression sensing in the preceding chart. Some conditions require a complete LG-CIU system, and some require only one LG to sense loading or unloading. Distinguishing the difference between the two are not considered necessary for the conceptual knowledge level for pilots in this presentation and are addressed only as in flight or on the ground. The ground mode switches to the takeoff mode when the thrust lever angle is greater than or equal to the maximum continuous thrust, engines running, and on the ground. If the engine 1 and 2 thrust lever angles are equal to or greater than the maximum continuous thrust level, and either LGCIU 1 or 2 since the aircraft is on the ground. The takeoff mode pre-pressurizes the aircraft when the thrust is set for takeoff. This action reduces the chance of a pressure bump in the cabin and descends the cabin at the rate of 500 feet per minute until the differential pressure reaches 1 psi. The takeoff mode switches to the climb mode when in flight after takeoff. If the aircraft speed exceeds 100 knots and one landing gear senses the aircraft in flight. The climb mode maintains the cabin altitude according to a fixed program schedule that takes into account the aircraft's actual rate of climb and destination landing elevation. 
maximum differential pressure is set to not exceed 8.06 psi. The climb mode switches to the cruise mode if leveled off for 30 seconds above 8,000 feet and 5,075 feet above takeoff. The altitude exceeds 8,000 feet and the altitude change since takeoff is greater than 5,075 feet and the aircraft has not had a rate of climb over 100 feet per minute for 30 seconds. The cruise mode maintains the cabin altitude at the level off value or the landing field elevation, whichever is higher. For example, on a normal flight with a cruise altitude of flight level 250, the cabin would maintain approximately 4,000 feet during cruise. But if the flight is to Denver, the CPC will allow the cabin to climb to Denver's field elevation. This situation occurs only for relative low altitude cruise conditions and will ensure that the cabin pressure will not be quickly released upon landing at high elevation fields. If the aircraft levels off before cruise flight level, the mode switches back to the climb mode when climb is resumed. The aircraft has a rate of climb over 100 feet per minute for 30 seconds. The cruise mode switches to the descent mode during descent from cruise flight level. If the aircraft has a rate of descent over 250 feet per minute for 30 seconds. The descent mode maintains a cabin rate of descent so that the cabin reaches the landing field pressure just before landing. The maximum cabin rate of descent is 750 feet per minute, may be modified on FMGC. The descent mode switches to the ground mode after touchdown if one landing gear senses the aircraft is on the ground and the aircraft speed is less than 100 knots. At touchdown, any remaining cabin pressure is released at a rate of 500 feet per minute. After this, with the ground mode engaged, the outflow valve remains fully open. The ground mode is engaged 55 seconds after landing and remains engaged until the takeoff mode engages for the next flight. The takeoff mode will switch back to the ground mode after RTO. If both thrust lever angles are below maximum continuous thrust and either LGCIU 1 or 2 since the aircraft is on the ground. We have covered the various pressurization modes that will be experienced in the normal flight sequence. The next frames will show how the pressurization system will respond to an aborted climb with a possible return to the departure field. The climb mode will switch to the abort mode if the aircraft returns to land. If the aircraft is below 8,000 feet or the altitude change since takeoff is less than 5,075 feet and the aircraft rate of descent is greater than 200 feet per minute for 30 seconds. The abort mode prevents the cabin from climbing. It engages if the aircraft does not climb after takeoff and ensures the cabin pressure differential is set back to the takeoff altitude plus 1 psi. The abort mode switches back to the ground mode after landing if the aircraft is sensed to be on the ground and the aircraft speed is below 100 knots. The abort or descent mode switches back to the climb mode if the aircraft stops descent and resumes climb, if the rate of climb exceeds 21 feet per minute for 60 seconds. If the FMGS is not able to provide the destination field elevation, the semi-automatic mode will be selected. The crew will be alerted to the loss of FMGS data by a message on the EWD and will move the landing elevation selector to manually select a landing field elevation. The selector is labeled in 2,000 foot increments from minus 2,000 feet to 14,000 feet 
for approximate selection and reference to the landing elevation displayed on the cruise page should be used for closer selection. In this situation, the system continues to provide automatic operation, but for a selected elevation. If the automatic function of both CPCs are inoperative, the crew manually controls cabin altitude by positioning the outflow valve through the manual backup section of CPC-1. This is accomplished by selecting the manual mode on the mode selector push button and toggling the manual VS control switch up or down to manually control the position of the outflow valve to select the cabin altitude. Care should be taken when changing the position of the outflow valve so as to not create discomfort. When the manual mode is active, the crew must manually open the outflow valve on the ground to ensure the cabin is not pressurized so the doors can be safely opened. During flight, the ECAM cruise page is normally displayed. It displays all pressurization digital information, the landing elevation, cabin vertical speed, cabin altitude, and differential pressure. The ECAM doors page also shows the cabin vertical speed, but only when the aircraft is in flight. The crew can monitor all cabin pressure parameters on the ECAM cabin press page. The pack indication is displayed white when the associated pack is on, but displays in amber if the associated pack flow control valve is closed. The outflow valve position is normally displayed in green, but displays amber if the valve is open more than 95% during flight. The current operating CPC is displayed in green as System 1 or System 2. An inactive system is not displayed. However, a faulty system displays amber, while the operating system displays in green. If manual control is selected, Manual appears in green. There is a single indication for the safety valves. Normally, the safety valves are not open and the symbol appears as shown here with white letters and green diagram lines. Both the letters and diagram lines display in amber if either valve is not closed. Differential pressure is displayed in PSI with a line and in digital format to indicate the difference in pressure between the current cabin pressure and the pressure of the outside atmosphere. Normal display color is green, but will appear in amber if the differential is less than minus 0.4 PSI or higher than 8.5 PSI. The digital portion of this display will pulse if the differential pressure exceeds 1.5 PSI during flight phase 7, approach between 800 feet and touchdown. When the differential pressure is at 1 PSI or less, the pulsing stops. The cabin vertical speed display in feet per minute in both an analog and digital format Large rates of vertical speed are normally associated with discomfort to passengers and should not occur during automatic or semi-automatic operation. The cabin vertical speed digital display pulses for vertical rates over 1,800 feet per minute. The analog and digital displays show in amber for vertical rates over 2,000 feet per minute. The cabin altitude normally displays green with an analog and digital format on the cabin press page.
The digital display pulses if the cabin altitude is at or above 8,800 feet and resets below 8,600 feet. Both analog and digital displays appear in red if the cabin altitude exceeds 9,550 feet. Some of the other displays on this page will be described with the avionics ventilation module. The vent, inlet, and extract indications are associated with the avionics ventilation system and will be discussed in a separate module. During flight, the cruise page is normally displayed. The digital format of the cabin vertical speed and cabin altitude display are conveniently displayed on this page. Before we finish this pressurization module, let's discuss the guarded ditching switch. This switch can be used to close all valves below the water line to seal the aircraft in preparation for ditching. These valves include the outflow valve, emergency ram air inlet, avionics ventilation inlet and extract valves, and pack flow control valves. Note, if the aircraft is connected to a conditioned air low pressure source on the ground and the ditching push button is selected on, a cabin differential pressure will build if all aircraft doors are closed. This completes the description of the operation of the pressurization system.